Hi, how are you doing? The ear sounds like a little something. Do you want your music to sound more like yourself? Yeah. Do you want to make sounds for your video game? You're in luck, because today I'll be taking you along the creation of my first sample pack. We'll learn how to make sounds like these. I will show you four concepts to help you make better sounds. If you like the sample pack, it'll be available for free on my website, link in bio. By layering sounds, you can give them depth. Oh my god. Possibilities become endless once you have many sounds that can interact with each other. This is a very efficient trick once you control three parameters, volume, pitch, and timing. Ableton has awesome warp modes that allow you to interact with pitch in an interesting manner. Volume can be changed on a per clip basis. While that's great, you can also be very creative using fades. And lastly, timing will dictate the impact and tail of your sound. You can create much more natural sounds by moving each part around a bit. Take a look at how these three parameters can create drastically different sounds. Every sound you hear can be divided into three frequency bands, lows, mids, and highs. This principle can guide your sound design while still allowing you to create more convincing sounds. For example, a kick might contain a lot more bass than a snare, but that doesn't mean that the snare doesn't have any bass in it. I find that using a separate track for each frequency band can be a great solution for this problem. It allows you to deconstruct every sound in three parts. Let's take this sample for example. See how I used a separate track for the basses and the other two tracks don't offer as much bass. This is so I can dial the volume of each part better. This results in a much more convincing impact. Sound design has no rules. Let me repeat this. Sound design has no rules. This means that you can experiment like never before because if it sounds good, it is good. What does auto-tune sound like on a snare? What if I recorded silence and then ran it through 10 distortions? What if I do whoop whoop? Still, you have to make sure your sounds have a purpose. For this sample pack, my goal was to create digital percussions and very aggressive drums. I used various distortions to obtain noisy results. Now, let's take a look at a crazy effects chain I used to generate some sounds. <coughs> I used a compressor, a saturator, a ring modulator, a transient shaper, and another saturator, a pitch shifter, and delay. Here's the result I got with this chain. It's a cool sound, but remember that an effects chain will yield different results depending on the order of the effects. If you want to achieve more with this trick, check this tip out. You need to interact with the effects of your chain. This can give you results like this. And here I only played with the delay's feedback. This generated a much more interesting tail. Playing with the effects will generate a lot more movement so you can create better sounds. I ended up using only a part of the tail to make this kick. Notice how each layer is a specific frequency band. Hey, you said the thing. To record the result of your experimentations, you'll need to resampling. resampling means that the effect that are applied on a sound will be baked into it. This is great to further interact with the results of your experimentations. It gives you a lot more control over the end result. I use resampling all the time to completely transform a sound. Check out the Bounce and Place device from Max for Life. It is a great time-saving tool. Let's completely obliterate a sound by running it through distortion over and over again by using resampling. So here's the first resampling I did, the fifth one, another one, another one. So one of the resampling results gave us some kind of click. And I use this click to create a new sample. Even this little detail can give us a new sound. Hope you learned something new. Don't forget to experiment and to make this music your own.